Vote on Speaker Boehner's debt bill within the next few hours. Now, if approved, it would then head to the Senate almost immediately for a vote tonight. Although the bill is not expected to pass in the Senate, it sets the stage for a possible compromise proposal that would eventually hit the president's desk. Yeah, but economic data, a big driver today for Wall Street. Weekly jobless claims dropping to a three-month low, providing an early boost before the bears took over late in the session. So is the recent market turmoil more about the economy or about the debt crisis? Let's ask Chapwood Capital Investments' Ed Batowski and Euro-Pacific Capital Senior Economist Michael Pento. Boy, Ed, it's awfully hard to figure out which one is attracting the attention of, of serious money investors and people who handle other people's money. But which do you think it is as you sit in that position? I'll tell you, it'll surprise you. I think it's a combination of both. But at the same time, the reason we had that sell-off at the end of the day had a lot to do with 401k investors clicking that button yesterday. And those, don't forget for a moment that those mutual fund managers, if there's a sale, they have to turn it to cash by the end of the day. So it didn't surprise me to start seeing the selling in the second hold session, on, hold on. the Are second you saying, half of the day. When you say that they clicked a button, you're saying they clicked the button to shift to cash because they're so nervous? That, that's, that's what's happening. You'll see that. We'll probably see it again tomorrow because they'll look, they'll see the market was down. They'll wake up tomorrow and, and hit a button and they'll sell their positions. And a lot of those positions are your large stocks and those S&P and, and Dow Jones uh, you know, mutual funds. You're going to start seeing some more selling. At some point that will stop. But that's what you're going to probably see again tomorrow. All right, Michael, let us bring it back to this whole debt issue. You say if there is no debt deal, that might be a good thing. Why? You know, first of all, I want to say Mr. Geithner gives me severe agita, and I hope he gives a lot of other people agita. He's running around telling Congress that it's their responsibility to raise the debt ceiling. This is the Treasury Secretary. Why is it Congress's responsibility to raise the debt ceiling? It should only be abrogated under the most severe But why would it be better for the markets if there's no debt deal? Well, no, I never said it would be better for the market. In the long, you long think term, it would be better if there's no debt right. deal, right? In duration, it's duration terms. There's a duration mismatch here. In the short term, it would be extremely pernicious. But in the long run, it's exactly what we need. We don't have the money for Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. Everybody knows that. So, so short that, term, the market would crash if there was no debt deal. Absolutely, because we'd have American-style austerity, which would be one and a half trillion dollars of austerity. All at once, okay. suddenly. Stand and getting a sense of, of how the markets would absorb this if we didn't get a deal, although it appears maybe we might see some type of compromise. When you hear that people are going to cash, would you advise that or not? No, first of all, there's not a chance in the world I would advise that. I think there's this panic that has set in, and I think it's unjustified. We are not going to have a market crash of any nature. Even if we don't raise the debt ceiling, although I think we're going to, even if we have a downgrade in our credit, we're not going to see a massive sell-off. Earnings are coming in pretty strong, and I'm not very positive on the policies of this government at all. I don't think anybody can be. No one likes what's going on in Congress. But let's take the discussion of a major crash on Wall Street off the table. It's not going to happen. Wait a second, sir. And all, with all due respect, we spend one and a half trillion dollars more than we take in in revenue in 2011, right. and that's going to be gone all of a sudden. That's going to have no effect yes. on the stock market whatsoever. No effect on oil or commodities. He said major crash. Well, I'll tell you, uh, we, I you, said major crash. The, 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 the heads Michael, of our I, major absolutely banks no... said that the stock market would drop 30 percent. Jamie Michael, Dimon said people, that. People who bring up. People who bring up that discussion that you're bringing up is creating and helping to stir a panic that is not justified. Earnings are coming in Earnings. fairly strong, and I do expect the stock That's market the to continue mirror, to go higher, even though there's over. Well, at the same time, even though the stock market is, will become overvalued because I don't know if earnings will be sustained, this market will go higher because the alternative on the bond market is just not All right. Well, guys, appeal. talk is cheap. Let's see where you put your money. Do you put your money where your mouth is, Michael? Where are well, you putting your money right now? Surprise for everybody right now. You know. <laughs> You know what? If we indeed do not raise the debt ceiling, bonds could rally and yields could fall because there'd be a huge fall off in supply issuance. And guess what? Banana Ben and his printing press wouldn't have to show up and, and monetize all these trillions of dollars in debt. So you might have a rally in the bond market because the Geithner can choose. So you put your money in that right bonds, now? Bonds, Social Security, Which and bonds? Medicare. Are you buying it right now? Are you buying into it? I tell you one thing I have a ton of cash. I'm in money markets, and I have a gold as my insurance That's policy. It. Did you and buy it's been working out for me very Wait, well. Long or short end treasuries? Uh, I, I would be, I'd be long treasuries okay. if they decide. This is a very important caveat. I'm so, if sorry, they decide, long treasuries, but long, on the long treasuries end, if they decide to not default on our debt. 
It's a decision. We have 2.2 trillion in revenue and 400 billion in interest payments. It's a decision. Okay. And I think we'll preserve the full faith and credit of the United States. Because once you lose that, it's irre irreparable. Ed, what are you buying right now? Well, first of all, I'm not buying what he's saying. That's without question. I would not <laughs> we, be going we, we got that. We got that. Ed. Absolutely not. Okay, I would be buying a couple things. I'd be buying Mu, which is the um, agricultural, basically uh, market sure. uh, sector ETF. I absolutely love that. And uh, and I'd be buying utilities. I think utilities are a great place. They're undervalued, and I think they're going to go a lot higher. From hey, here. can I ask a quick question before we? we quick, leave? quick, quick. Why, why isn't everybody so sanguine about a deal coming coming to fruition here? They're not. Am I the only person on the planet who thinks it's going to be very difficult? Well, why? Let me, ask you, let me ask you a question, Michael. Sure. Why is it that bond yields are so low right now? I just told you why. But if there, if there is why. a panic no about the, a crash why. coming, wouldn't bond yields be higher? Well, that, what, in, two, in 2008, 2009, when there was a panic, All that's right. what happened. Bond yields, I, I tell you. Michael, Ed, it's been a great discussion, but we do have to move on. We could have you for a whole hour next time. Ed Butowski and Michael Pento, great to see you both. Michael's you, buying man. beef jerky and water after the show. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so our